Welcome to this Automation Academy Mastering the Machine webinar for the 19th of May 2023. Our topic today was content creation, Camtasia, and complaints. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Hey, I recognize Tommy Wells. Cool, man. I recognize you from, from Stephen Gates' webinars. I'm going to be talking about some of that a little bit today since that was content creation stuff. Uh, in any case, this is uh, the 57th actual Mastering the Machine video uh, webinar, and I do these every couple of weeks. I uh, did one a couple of weeks ago and had Alicia Gilpin as a guest, always looking for guests. Um, that makes things more interesting because there's someone to kind of bounce ideas off of and things like that. So uh, I titled today's uh, Mastering the Machine, Content Creation, Camtasia, and Complaints, uh, which covers a lot of things, none of which are directly related to industrial automation, uh, but they still fit the mold of the Mastering the Machine videos. So I'll talk a little bit about that um, and what these things are, the NTH University, IO Central, et cetera. Um, show you a little bit about where this came from. What is the Automation Academy? This is a membership site that I created a couple years ago, and I'm going to go over why I kind of created it as part of my content creation. Um, it contains lots of training videos for people that do industrial automation, uh, PLC programming, which I've taught for, I guess, coming up on 10 years now. Um, traveled around the country and done it, uh, did it live before. Um, Lots of training videos, a library. I will be showing a piece of it today because, again, it's part of the content uh, that I've had to create over the last few years. Uh, there is a library in there, lots of technical documents, software. I'll be talking about how I pitch those up and how you protect those uh, online if you need to from just anybody downloading stuff. Uh, there is a community there with interest groups called IO Central. It is particular to industrial automation, so we don't usually talk about, you know, content creation and things like that on there. Um, and then we do have these regular events, Mastering the Machine webinars on different subjects, sometimes with guests. And you can go to these different websites to check some of these out, all of which have content on them, which is, again, today's topic. Uh, my first content. So I started a blog in 2010. And uh, at the time, I was working for somebody else, and I started posting Gosh, I would post probably three times a week on the automation primer. I was very excited about it because it was the first time I'd ever really presented things to people. And it kind of, uh, I learned what a blog was, I think, that year and uh, started putting answers to questions that people at work would ask me because it was easier than just ask, answering the same question over and over again. So I was always pretty good at writing stuff up and I just started putting technical blog posts. Um, for those who don't know, my background is custom machine building, and at the time, I worked for a big company called Wright Industries, and they built custom machines. So I would get questions from electrical people about mechanical things because I was a machine designer. I would get mechanical uh, questions from electrical people um, and uh, just programming questions, things like that. So I started posting probably mostly uh, PLC-oriented things there. Uh, next content, and you see here, 2011, what grew out of the automation primer, I actually uh, started writing a book on the content, and eventually the book got picked up by McGraw-Hill. And uh, so I got to publish my first book uh, that year. It took a lot of time. At that time, somewhere around there, I left Wright Industries, and I spent about four months working on that book entirely. And, of course, they guided me through a lot of the content creation and they edited it and had suggestions and lots of changes. So I kind of learned a little more of the formal writing and how books are written uh, from McGraw Hill and from the editors there. They wanted things in a certain format and then they turned it over to a company in India that did the actual editing. And so I learned something about that and that was 2011. And then I decided to put out my own training manual in 2016, which is the next uh, little book that you see here. And I went through a what they call a vanity publishing company. Uh, you pay them to format the book, uh, you know, make the book cover, 
um, get you an ISBN number, which is important for books. Um, and, you know, they guide you through the process. And originally, I think they were going to charge me, I don't know, two or $3,000. And I talked them down to about 1500 bucks. But they did very little for me. Um, and it really didn't give me a lot of control over what I did. So if I wanted to, to buy one of those books, I had to go to them and buy it. If I wanted to put it on Amazon or something like that, other people could buy it, but they didn't do a very good job of uh, publicizing it. So the next book that I published, uh, published in 2019, I did myself uh, with the help of my daughter who owns a branding company and does editing and things like that. I put out this advanced PLC hardware and programming book myself through Ingram and then published another little uh, training manual in 2020. And all these are available on Amazon. So I learned something about, uh, you know, how books are sold and even tried to set up my own Amazon uh, sales site. That did not work particularly well. Uh, you don't want to have to fulfill that stuff yourself and they will do it for you. They'll actually stock all the books and ship them direct for you. But it's still, I have nine different people selling books online and I don't have to deal with it at all. So I get royalties from it and everything else. It works pretty well. Uh, so that's not really about the creation. Most of that, these were all done in kind of Word, right? Just Microsoft Word. Uh, the pictures, there are a lot of tricks when it comes to the pictures. And I learned that on the first book. I had to have permission to use any commercial pictures. And I had to go out to... Um, to some of the different companies like Allen Bradley and uh, you know Siemens, IDEC, if I were going to use something from their website, I had to have written permission per McGraw Hill to use any pictures from their site. And some companies said yes, and in particular Allen Bradley, which is a big part of what I do, said no, uh, you cannot use our pictures. And I said why? And they said, well, we looked at your website and you're in competition with us. And I was like. I don't make PLCs or any of that kind of stuff. And they said, well, but you teach classes and you write training manuals and so do we. Uh, so I got a, a little bit soured on Alan Bradley right there, even though they're a big part of my income. Uh, so that was my next, uh, you know, uh, content creation. I've published all, self-published all these and still coming out with more of these. And you notice here that it has the NTH University logo on the front of it. And that's a, a big part of what I do now. I've gotten kind of some sponsorship there. Uh, next things I did, did was created this Automation Academy site. And the reason I did it is I had traveled extensively teaching classes in person until 2020. And then a big tornado came up in March, on March 3rd, and it hit my training facility, wiped it out completely. And then two weeks later, COVID hit. And so I found myself without a training facility with a lot of training stuff and um, uh, not really a way to get stuff to people, right? Uh, the travel ended and my facility ended. So I started creating online content and I joined something called the, Auto, uh, the Membership Academy and they taught you how to build a membership site and how to put everything on that site so that people can get at it uh, they will pay and join the Automation Academy, and then they'll have access to documents or recorded videos or things like that. And that's kind of uh, where I got into Camtasia. I think I bought Camtasia in 2017 and first used it for this company, Automation NTH. They wanted somebody to create training videos for them based on some in-person training I'd done in California. So we recorded a lot of what I did there, and then we kind of pieced it together into a kind of an informal class and then upgraded it a little bit to be able to serve it up to the company that I had done the training for. Uh, so that's how I got connected with this uh, NTH University in the first place was through uh, both teaching some of their employees in person and also going out and uh, uh, doing the training for Dexcom, which is a, a kind of a medical device manufacturer in California. Went out, taught that class, just set up a camera on a tripod and grabbed some footage. And we used some of the footage in the training videos. And then I had to go back in Camtasia and, uh, and edit a lot of that and figure out how Camtasia works. So my first version of 
the video software that I used was a 2017 version. And I think it was called, maybe the first one I had was Camtasia 8. I believe that was the name of it. And then upgraded to various versions. And they only charge you, I think I paid $59 this year to upgrade to 2023, right? And I've upgraded, I think, every year. And I have copies of those licenses. And I can install them on various computers. You do need Camtasia to be present on the computer uh, as you do it. So that's kind of how I evolved into doing this stuff for NTH University. Um, and I, I spent about two weeks a month doing content creation and physical training for Automation NTH. Um, so the current project, uh, and I think Tommy, I see Tommy on here. Tommy attended a webinar that I did for Stephen Gates. And Stephen Gates has PLC classes and uh, great guy. He has a, a company called My PLC Training. And I did a, a live uh, uh, webinar for him on this subject, PID control. And he had asked me, do I know anything about PID? And I had already started creating content for NTH University. So I kind of merged it together, put together a PowerPoint and did a webinar on that. Um, so what kind of content is involved in this particular project? One of the reasons I did this project for Automation NTH is they have a lot of courses, but the courses don't have all of these elements in them, right? Some courses are not taught live at all, right? They're entirely, um, the students self-guide themselves through the course. So you don't need a PowerPoint for that. You just need written documents. Um, you don't necessarily need a video for some of it. They just read stuff, answer questions, prove they can get through it, and then write programs for things, right? P uh, PLC programs. That was very uh, interesting. That's the first time I've effectively been hacked. So um, continuing right along. Okay, so let's start out with uh, the initial write-up. So what I did is I wrote a document that looked like this. So what is this? And that'll get cut out, all that fun stuff there. This is an NTH University document. Wrote up a, up a bunch of stuff on, right, closed loop systems, PID control, this kind of stuff. So this would be something that people would read, and then they would uh, maybe answer questions. So I have some exercises in here, people learn stuff, exercise one. Tommy, who's on here, attended the webinar, and I think uh, we kind of went through this with a PowerPoint. So here's some of the questions. Now, one of the things that's interesting about questions like this is these kind of questions can't be used on a learning management system. Okay, so you, you can't, on a learning management system, typically you'd want to do like multiple choice questions, things like that so that you can automatically grade things. So people wouldn't want to necessarily write, you know, uh, technical answers to these kind of things. When is cascade control used? That could be, you know, so that has to be kind of hand graded. So that's kind of tough. Um, so from this document, I also had to create some, uh, some auxiliary documents, right, that supported this. And I think I put the references at the end of them. Let me see if I have the references on here. Yeah, so these are the references and I made documents for those and I posted them uh, on my Automation Academy site and they're also in the NTH University, uh, you know, in their, on their server. So uh, the initial write, write up with the exercises, the supporting documents, all Word documents. Then from that, again, related to uh, Stephen Gates' webinar, I had to create the start of a PowerPoint, which is kind of what I'm doing here, presenting with a PowerPoint. And so they kind of have a splash screen that they put on the front of it. And then I went through much of the same stuff that I did for Stephen's webinar. All right. So, so these are the slides that were on there, kind of explains everything, how it works, how to use the Alan Bradley uh a lot of these are screen captures, and I, I literally just, you know, surround an area of the screen and do a snip uh, for that. And I've started using PowerPoint to uh, cut and paste, dot, uh, you know, images and things like that from the Internet. So that's kind of how that works. Uh, so if I need a, 
uh, I don't know, a good simple slide, I will go find an image from the internet or have to create my own. And that's where you get into some of these royalty kind of issues or uh, content, uh, you know, property issues. So this is an interesting case in point. I needed a curve like this, but couldn't draw this myself. So I went and found something on the internet that had something approximately like the curves that I needed. I brought it into Paint, right? Just Microsoft Paint. I redid a lot of the graphics that were on there, including this side label and this label, made it very simple, uh, then saved it, right? So drew things over the top of it and then saved it. And the first place I used it was on this PowerPoint pre uh, presentation. But because of that, I avoid any of the royalty infringement kind of issues that might be uh, present. So that's kind of how that works here. So I needed some of those. And then, of course, these kind of things are captured from my own software. And Tommy knows I did a demonstration of this software uh, during the webinar. And I'm going to probably show that here, too, kind of where that comes from. So uh, PowerPoint, that was the next thing I did. Then I uh, decided that, okay, I need to make a video of this for Automation NTH, and I'm going to use it myself. So I'm going to have to create it with their logo on it to start with. And this is where I got into the Camtasia stuff. And I have this kind of running on, on another screen, and I'll drag it over in a second. But before I do that, I'm going to show you the, the program. So some of you here are here for content creation, maybe, and some of you are here for the technical side of it. So I'm going to show you a little bit of both. Um, PLC program, for those of you who don't know what a PLC is, is it's basically a computer that operates inputs and outputs and make things run. And this particular uh, computer, right, it's a, uh, I'm using Logic's designer, which normally would have had some input and output cards to it. But instead, I'm using an emulator, which is a fake PLC. Uh, I don't have any real I.O. in it. I use all fake I.O. so that I can run it on my desktop. I run it with something called an emulator. And the emulator looks like this, looks like a fake PLC, and you can stick cards in the slots and uh, run fake things and all that. And then uh, programmed using this kind of stuff, right? So ladder logic, this this sort of thing. So all this simulation is is uh, very simple. Uh, if this value is greater than zero, then turn on this this output. Basically, what does the output look like? It looks like let's see, the physical output is on a screen, it's not a wired output, it looks like this. So this little green indicator up here, right? So if I need to turn on that indicator, and I'll run this, we'll see if it runs here, there we go. I'm running it, and see how the valve changes color? So that thing that I had in there uh, turns the valve on and off. And so this is a screen simulation of a PID process. And of course, this webinar is not about PID, so we're not going to uh, uh, discuss the PID aspect of this, but that's the PLC simulation, the HMI simulation. And then I got into, okay, I need to record this and make a class using some kind of software. And of course, I chose Camtasia, which uh, Camtasia, right? I just made a simple screen here for Camtasia, and this is what Camtasia looks like. OK, so uh, like I said, I got uh, started probably four versions ago, um, so I'm familiar with this interface. It has changed right as as they uh, progress through, um, you know, making upgrades and things like that. They they release a different version every year and I get an upgrade for like only fifty nine dollars a year. And I get the new version, and I can put that on the same computer or a different computer. I've now got it on two laptops. I've got it on NTH's laptop and then my normal laptop that I normally do my uh, presentations with, uh, which is on a desk behind me here. So how does Camtasia work? Anybody who's familiar with, like, music recording, it's a lot like that. So uh, you would have, you know, tracks and things here of music. And so this is, for instance, audio. You can see the little waveform. 
And as I play it, it goes through the timeline. All right, plays a little intro music. Notice this is a little muffled. Okay, and I'm noticing some things here, like for instance, being able to zoom in on this has become a little more awkward than it was on my previous version. So that's one of the changes they made that may not work as well. Um, let's see here. These are all the different elements on this timeline. You can see here, here's the voiceover. And I'm going to, I'm going to talk, and this is very short. I only have about a minute of it done. This is going to finish up here in a second. Okay, so that's all I've got done on that. That's only one minute of uh, video there. And you can see it's composed of a lot of different things, right? I've got audio up here. They're chopped up. They were all done at different times. I've got uh, text here, right? Just floating text, and it shows where the text is. That was the title. Uh, everything, right? As you click on the item on the timeline, it shows where the thing is, right? Got pictures. You can name things out here on the left uh, to, so that you kind of know where things are. And they had a tutorial where you could group things and you could, uh, it, it really has been very awkward using a lot of those tools because once you group something, it all collapses and the names all get messed up here on the left side. So that's been an awkward thing. Uh, also, things like if I want to do a transition like a fade, all alphabetical order and as they added new things, right, it's really hard to get to the one thing that I need, which is fade, right? I have to scroll down to this each time to put a fade at the beginning. But pretty good software, especially for 59 bucks a year. And I don't have to pay the license every year. I could stick with 2023 this year and never buy it again. And it works perfectly well. But as they evolve, uh, they're starting to put some salesy things in there. And that's where I'm going to get my first complaint. So why, why is this content creation and complaints? Um, here's my first complaint with Camtasia. And this is going to be a recurring create, uh, complaint. If I go to audio effects here. Audio effects and go into the, this. You notice here, this is a new feature. It says edit in Audiate. And then it says learn about TechSmith Audiate. Cool, right? So uh, audio compression, I could probably have cleaned up the vocals on that first little section. But when you open this and you say edit in Audiate, you find out that uh, it's a seven day trial after which you have to pay $299 to use audio. Um, that is kind of, uh, I would like to get rid of this because if I'm not going to buy audio for $299, I don't need this popping up every time, right? It's a waste of space on this screen. Um, I can collapse it but I don't know how to get rid of this toolbar. So this is this feature is a $299 anchor for me, uh, especially so I also play music. And one of the things that I use is a, is a program called Wave Lab. And Wave Lab has a free version. And I could take my audio and edit it in Wave Lab and it would be fine. You know, I could do anything I want to. But here, uh, not only is this $299, but best I've figured out that this is a subscription model, right? So if I go here and I say edit and audio, download a free trial, but it is a, it is a trial, right? And then I, I, like I said, I dug into it and I found out it's $299 probably every year. That's, you know, five times the cost of Camtasia itself. And this is new. This only showed up this year. So not a fan of that. Um, but other than that, Camtasia is a great tool. Um, I don't know if there's any questions about Camtasia itself. I see this uh, Arvin, and there was somebody else on here before, and I think all that screaming uh, it, on the hacker uh, chased them away. Uh, th that will get cut out, by the way. I'm able to chop that out and put it on YouTube and that was looked like some nasty stuff. Um, 
But in any case, uh, so one of the things that I learned when I was doing all this content creation stuff, I uh, it it takes a ridiculously long time to edit videos to make these formal videos. I'm going to show you uh, something else here, which is my Automation Academy site itself. So there's the Zoom screen. That's where somebody found this. This is the main screen of my Automation Academy where you get into this stuff. This is the uh, library, right, which has lots of documents, content, right, exactly. So the latest PID stuff I put in here, for instance, uh, is in technical miscellaneous, and it has these six documents. So these are part of the content. They are uh, originally PID 001 are the uh, write-up that I showed you. It's about 18 pages. The solutions to the exercise, uh, so they're not embedded in the same thing. Uh, this was from National Instruments, and it's just something I brought in, and I gave them full credit for it, uh, but I did create a separate document for it. And then a, a thing written by uh, uh, Harold Enulat. He's from... Um, um, he's from Minnesota, and he had a really good write-up on, on using the D-term in here. Then I also put two P uh, PLC program, the same program that I showed you before, and the PID simulation. And then in the education, in the courses, I'm going to put that video. So these are the videos that I've already got in there. They're all created with Camtasia. Uh, some of them are... Uh, took a long time to create. So this one, for instance, my RS Logics 500 video. Uh, when I did the actual you know, analysis of how long it takes to do things, it took one minute, uh, well, one hour for a minute of finished video, um, which is pretty ridiculous. If you want a one hour video, that is 60, uh, 60 hours of work to create it. Uh, so that is for a formal video. And what I mean by a formal video, let me see if I can uh, open this up. Let's see what shows up here. So if I pick uh, just one of the routines in scanning, pick something, uh, this one's good. I'll open it up. And this is how you pitch this stuff. So it's a website with videos on it. This, uh, if I actually run it, we'll see how this looks here. Right, so a little music in the beginning. As I scroll through it, you can see it go through. And you see, when you see the, uh, you should see arrows. And you hear the voiceover and you see the arrow moving around. That is what takes the time. So if you want to type up all these graphics and you want to explain what things are and how they work, all this and the explanation, that is one hour per minute of finished video for that type of um, that type of a course. Uh, so people that are charging a lot for their courses and putting them on things like Udemy or Thinkific or whatever, you know, if they want to create a professional course like this, they're having to spend a lot of time to do it. Uh, I know Tommy knows uh, some of uh, Stephen Gates stuff, and I've never seen Stephen Gates' actual videos. I don't go to his site and actually attend his uh you know, his webinars. I'm not a member, so I don't get to see those. But I will say the ones I've seen look very professional from everybody, from Stephen, from uh, Sean Tierney, from, uh, you know, a lot of different people. But they they take a tremendous amount of time to create. So content creation, especially videos, is super duper time consuming. Um, I write pretty quickly. So I, I can publish stuff and make, uh, I don't know, a page probably takes me 10 minutes or 15 minutes, depends on how much graphics is on there, things like that. Now, I've got some simpler courses. Um, let's see if we can go back. Simpler courses would be like uh, uh, the courses themselves, education, how to use these videos. That was pretty quick. Any of these Odyssey videos, I create them way quicker. So what I do there is I open the software and I just start recording myself programming. And I don't put moving graphics and I don't put separate titles. I do kind of like I'm doing on this webinar. I just start recording what I'm doing and voiceover. And I think I have in here, let's see, TI Portal Odyssey has a whole bunch of modules. 
Oh, TIA Portal does not have a whole bunch of modules. The Step 7 does. TIA Portal Odyssey, uh, Step 7 Odyssey uh, has a ton of them. Yeah, there we go. So this is an example of some of the courses, the content that's in there. I had to make a little graphic for it so that it pops up on the main screen. There's a spreadsheet asso associated with it, right? Siemens hardware and software write up. And then there's tons and tons of videos. And these videos, I'll just pick one at random here, can be a lot longer. So this guy, 15 minutes long. Uh, that's about as long as you want to go on videos. People don't want to sit down and watch a video more than about 15 minutes. Uh, I think, uh, you know, these webinars are an hour. Uh, typically, I put an hour's worth of material on YouTube, and I don't think anybody watches them all. Um, but this is a lot more uh, free-flowing here. Let's see. We'll pitch this up. This took a second or three to put my face on there. But then you can see I'm just recording the screen here. There's no moving graphics. There's no titles. It's just me programming. So that's pretty easy. And then I explain as I go along. I'm pretty good at doing that because I teach these classes. So um, that kind of video, I would say, stop that. Here we go. Uh, these kind of videos take maybe, um, maybe I get 10 minutes of video from an, or 15 minutes and it takes me an hour or two. So that's a lot more efficient. So that kind of content is, is pretty efficient. Now let's talk about the content in this website itself. This has been a real learning curve for me. Um, I have a blog, like I said, I had, I had uh, created that and I was already familiar with WordPress. WordPress allows you to, uh, you know, create, uh, pictures and put them on the screen, do write-ups. It's very user-friendly and you can type things up just like typing a document and embed pictures in it and things like that. That was pretty easy. When I wanted to create a new uh, you know, page, I just said new post. This is a little more awkward and has kind of grown. So let's go in here and I'll just hit edit. I'll go back and go to the main dash, dashboard. We go here. And so this is the behind the scenes look at what this is. There are tons and tons of plugins, right? Lots and lots of pages, worker school. That's because I have two accounts, yeah. So it pops up with different ones. Um, for me to uh, add a, a webinar post takes only a few minutes. I simply edit all the video from this webinar and then I upload it to a, a place called Vimeo. Vimeo is sort of like YouTube. It's a place for you to store your videos, but you can hide them from Vimeo itself. And you can put a link on there that can only be opened from this page, right? So when I was going through those videos, it goes to Vimeo. And I'm going to show you a little bit of what all that looks like. Vimeo is here. And when I upload it to there, to Vimeo, that screen can only be accessed from uh, my Automation Academy site. What that means is people can't just throw those addresses out there and have 100 people just go get all the stuff that I have to charge for for free, right? So that protects it. It's the same thing with these libraries. So this is Vimeo and YouTube. The YouTube stuff is free, right? If it's a webinar, uh, it's free. I put it on there and anybody can access it. But if it's something like all my job assistant stuff, uh, you know, career, goal, passion, realism, all these videos, these are only on Vimeo. There is no free version on YouTube or something like that. So it's nice that you can do that, right? You, and every once in a while, I'll put like a teaser. There's a Control Logics Odyssey uh, video for DDE and OPC links, which is useful for technical guys. Uh, so lots of different things. This is how I keep, kind of keep track of everything. Like I said, some of the videos are much more complicated. Some of them are simpler. But at this point, I have 136 videos, some of which are on YouTube, some of which are on Vimeo, et cetera. Uh, for documents themselves, I PDF them and I put them on AWS. AWS is a, uh, it's Amazon, Amazon Web Services. Right. So I can put all those there. And once again, you can only open these documents from 
my Automation Academy site. So that's kind of a, a good feature of some of these tools. People who have memberships to the Automation Academy can grab those things and use them for whatever they want to. Uh, for, for example, this is one of those books I showed you. And that book lists for uh, $55, and it's all free here if people join the Automation Academy. And our cheap membership is only $9.99. So people can pay $9.99 and get a PDF of all different sections of a book that costs $55. So that's the point of the Automation Academy and the things I'm creating there. And then you can see here, yeah, things like microcontrollers and electrical CAD and uh, psychological tests, right? These were practice tests for people getting jobs. They can take these as a uh, see how they do on math and things like that, how much they already know, and then it'll give them suggestions on what they still need to learn. So lots and lots of documents. These are all the content that I've had to create for this. But this website um, is way more complicated uh, than the blog was, right? There are a ton of plugins. So I the the jury is out as to how uh, economical this is. I do make more money on the Automation Academy than I spend on all the plugins and website, but I nowhere near pay for my time. Um, I only have probably, I don't know, seven or eight regular members, and they're paying $29.99 a month or $9.99 a month for a couple of them, which doesn't get them most of the videos. It just gets them the downloadable documents. Uh, but you have to have a learning management system plugin. That's the thing that pitches up the quizzes and tests. You have to have uh, a plug-in for the posts, which are the uh, uh, these webinars, right? They they show up as posts, so you can go through and just see the latest webinar. Uh, there is a Learn Dash. There is Member Press. There is Buddy Boss. Buddy Boss takes you to let's go back to is it site and go back to IO Central. Buddy Boss, you get to. Let's see the Academy and IO Central. So Buddy Boss is this, right? Oops, still got to do that. I am not a robot. That's because of hackers like the guy today that came in here and just blew up the site, had all the nasty streaming stuff. Uh, see if anybody's been on here lately. I'm probably the last person. Vincent Walker, uh, somebody. Best Delta 8 gummies. Isn't that fun? So I'm going to have to kick this guy out because he is just spamming. Registered member. So it's mostly me. Yeah, this is one of the downsides to all these. You have to protect yourself from uh, people who register and spam you. And uh, this is actually a legitimate registry here. Right? Join this group. But then he's advertising Best Delta 8 gummies. All right, so I'm going to have to kick this guy out and going to have to uh, go into the tools. And I spend way more time uh, doing stuff like that than I probably need to. But anyway, that is that is a look at some of the content. Like I said, some of its written content. And now it's time for complaints and open discussion on complaints. I already complained about Camtasia. Right. So we don't need to complain much more on that, but they're trying to sell me stuff. Right. They want to sell me Audiate. That was one of my complaints. They never had anything like that before. Uh, Microsoft. And so my first complaint about that is, again, they're always trying to sell me stuff. Now my uh, my Chrome doesn't work with Outlook. And I think Microsoft went there, went in there and they said, oh, you have to enable disable JavaScript or whatever. But it forces you to jump over and open. Um, uh, you know, Edge or one of their browsers, they don't like Chrome, they're not friends with Google. So they try to sell you on their browser, right? And they always want you to up, don't use Google, use Bing. How many people use Bing? Seriously. So there's one of my complaints about Microsoft too. Always trying to sell you something and their products are not as good as uh, some of the other products, Google and things like that. And they just won't leave you alone. Uh, Rockwell Automation, Alan Bradley, uh, all the complaints in the world. Let's see, I wrote some of these down. Uh, heavy, heavy software uh, without any improvements, right? They have, I've used uh, Control Logic since the very beginning, and I used Logix 500 before that. And uh, the software's gotten bigger, heavier, crashes just as much as it ever did before, takes longer to open. 
uh, and yet you have a support contract every year that you have to pay for for problems, right? You're having to pay for support for something that they break. So uh, that pretty much sucks. Uh, new heavier versions of 5000 and factory talk view, which is slower, twice as much code, and it does nothing that it didn't do eight years ago with earlier versions. It, it is not better. Um, so that's one of my complaints about them. And factory talk popping up messages all the time when I open my, uh, just open my software. It's like, you know, or not even open my software. When I just open my computer, factory talk services is running and it pops up a message. I don't need Alan Bradley to run most of the time on my laptop, right? So it's intrusive. Microsoft is intrusive. I have a Dell update now once a week, and I have a Microsoft update once probably a week, and I have 13 laptops. So if I had to update all of those laptops, fortunately I've disabled updates and disabled service and all those laptops run fine. I use them for training, uh, ship them around the country, haul them with me and teach classes on them, uh, and they all work fine. So uh, unless I was going on the web and browsing lots of things, right, and finding bad sites like that guy who dropped in here, um, you know, I don't have a need to upgrade my software all the time. And of course, now they're hitting me up with Windows 11 uh, updates. And I, I accidentally, I think, clicked on something and it was trying to force the update on me and I managed to back out of it. But I had to go into the registry to edit it, to stop it from updating me to uh, Windows 11. You know, Windows 10s work fine for me. I'll go to 11 when I have to. Um, with automation NTH, they'll force me to go to 11 at some point, but it'll probably be incompatible with Alan Bradley or something like that. So that's that's my complaints. Um, and then I think that's the last slide I had prepared for today. And the next webinar, topic unknown, probably going to be back off. I'm probably going to do a tech uh, deep dive on back off because I have a back off class uh, the week before or the week after that. So that's the next uh, webinar. But does anybody else have any complaints? Any good complaints? Tommy, you got to have some complaints. No, I really don't have any. No complaints on no. anything? Not oh, even technical no. complaints. Uh, I didn't save some some logic and then it disappeared when my. That's the only complaint. <laughs> it don't oh, automatic now. Are you running an emulator? Or are you running an actual PLC? Oh no, I was. It was just from Steve's uh course. So, but but are you, you're running the software right? So one oh, of the yeah. 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 So one of the cool things is, let's say my software crashed, right? Mm -hmm. But I have the emulator running, or I have a real PLC running. Well, the mm -hmm. it's in the it's in the PLC. Even the edited things are in the PLC. So I can always just upload again if I lose everything. If I lose uh, everything. Um, yeah, that was my question. Yeah, that's a that's a big plus. So yeah, for me, I'm running. Uh, I'm running this here, and if I, you know, if my software crashes, which it does, Alan Bradley software crashes a lot. If this right now got disconnected. One of the things you got to be really careful with, if you're online editing, right, you're changing what's in the PLC, and then let's say this crashes. It mm -hmm. didn't get saved. Well, if you go back online with a PLC, it'll say upload changes, and and I would say, yes, I will upload the changes. Oh. And then I get, yeah. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, so yeah, that's like, a huge plus. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, this is simple. This isn't doing much of anything. I've showed you my other, uh, I think I've gone through some of those webinars with Stevens classes that uh, had a lot of code in them and things, but I took this out because on my Automation Academy site, people can download this if they have the software. I always say, you know, it's not going to do you a lot of good if you don't own the software yourself. And same thing with the HMI software. So I'm trying to come up with kind of, uh, well, some kind of free versions of software to use. A great suggestion is Beckoff. Beckoff runs the same kind of stuff Alan Bradley does, uh, but mm -hmm. you can run it on your computer. And it for practice, man, it, the latter editor is nowhere near as friendly. It's it's not like this where you can loop and you know uh, 
branches and all that, the tag mm -hmm. database. This is a little more user friendly, but back off is free and it runs for seven days, you know, with a license and you can just have it on your laptop locally and it has an HMI built into it. So that's a huge oh. plus. Yeah. I'm a yeah, huge I'm a back off fan now. I, I, I don't hope Alan Bradley dies exactly, but I don't know, man, they're a pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they, they, I see them everywhere. Yeah, they're a big, well, they're 70% of the U.S. market. I'd say oh. that's the, you know, here, that's the that's the first platform you need to learn. Second would be Siemens. Uh, oh. Because worldwide, Siemens is the biggest. So, and, oh. and okay. I would also say in the U.S., uh, they may have 5% of the PLCs in the U.S., but they have like 1% of the programmers. So, mm -hmm. if you can do Siemens and Allen Bradley, man, you have a job forever. Right. Okay. And then okay. the third, my third choice is back off. And I, I will bet people that 20, 30 years from now, back off's bigger than Alan Bradley or Siemens because it runs on a computer. And they've been talking about how can we run on an open platform? And it's basically Codasys and Codasys is open. Um, mm -hmm. and, and if everybody learns that, then there's no more, you don't have to be brand specific anymore. Everything will be compliant with IEC 61131 and everything will run, et cetera. So, okay. Yeah. So that's um, kind of my, my new favorite platform is back off. And of course, Automation NTH is paying me to learn, which uh, can't beat that, right? So, right, right. Yeah. It's always a good thing. Yeah, I don't have any other complaints. My wife's bringing me lunch in about 45 minutes, so I don't want to complain about her. Uh, right. <laughs> Mike, you complain about the lunch. <laughs> oh no, she well, she's going to she's going to the grocery store and picking up a sandwich or something. But I have another oh. another conference with somebody at twelve thirty, so I said, well, I can't come home easily for lunch because I also have to compile all this stuff and put it on YouTube. So for those people who don't know, I do put all these on YouTube, right? I'm either automatic eye or you look for automation consulting. There are now fifty seven of these webinars posted on there, plus some free training on various things, just me oh, okay. thinking around with software, uh, you know, some Alan Bradley and some Siemens. Oh, that doesn't mean I'm you should leave these nice formal close, uh, classes like Stephen has, because his are much more, right, organized and, and yeah. you will learn this, then you will learn this. And I think he helps people with job searches and things. I don't know. But, Stephen yeah. is a good guy. Yeah, he is a good guy, real good guy. Like yeah, I, I invite him to some of these webinars, but he's probably busy working during the day. Yeah. So anyway, that is pretty much it for this webinar. Like I said, I do these every two to three weeks. Lately, it's been every two weeks, typically. Okay. And I said June 3rd, that's a Saturday. I think I'm going to do it on back off. I'm going to do a drive through of their, uh, you know, latest version. Well, latest version right now of software. They're about to do a new release, too. But it runs, like I said, on in Visual Studio with Microsoft Visual Studio. So I'm a big fan of Beckoff. Okay. okay. For that reason, it just, you know, you, you need bit Visual Studio anyway. If you want to do Python programming or, you know, uh, C programming, it runs in Visual Studio. So, and then okay. Beckoff runs in there too. And you have all, the, you know, ladder and you have structured text and you have everything in Beckoff. So, hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. Next webinar will be on that. Um, and it'll just be me driving through the class that I have for automation NTH, but that's, that's pretty much it.